New South Wales after another day of falling positive tests. This is the Premier had crisis talks with the mayors of hotspot LGAs who are calling for equal treatment when it comes to restrictions. Now, cases have fallen for a third straight day to 1,127. It is too early to really identify trends when there are so many factors involved. However, today's case numbers were the lowest since the 1st of September, with some experts suggesting there may be a glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel. Now, the biggest reason for optimism is the vaccination rate. More than 8.2 million doses have gone into arms in our state. Nearly 80% of over 16s have had their first dose. If New South Wales were a country, that record would be the sixth best in the world. However, there is mounting anger across the suburbs as some Sydney siders endure the harshest possible lockdown despite having few local cases. Who would Mayor John Faker walk in his side of a divided suburb? Croydon, with just six cases in two weeks, is split by COVID and red tape. Well, this is a hotspot area, um, but the funny thing is, Dan, if you walk 30 metres down that way, you're actually then in the inner west council, which is not a hotspot area, even though we're in the same suburb. There's no scientific reason that would suggest that across the road is safer than this side of Croydon. With his LGA notching up only a handful of infections each day, he's no longer asking, he's pleading for Burwood to be set free. Well, it is pleading because it makes no sense. Today, he and 12 other mayors met via Zoom with the Premier, pitching their case for restrictions to be lifted. You can't divide people through an imaginary line on a map. Uh, Sydney is one area and we need to do this together. Uh, there were no guarantees given today. What she did promise, though, is that she'll go back and speak to Cabinet, she'll go back and speak to Health and look at any sort of restrictions that can be eased. It's her career on the line. If she doesn't deliver, people are going to remember this because families are hurting. Overnight, there were two more deaths and 231 patients are now in intensive care. But the number of new cases is 1,127 the lowest figure in two weeks. If it was me, I'd be having a sneaky glass of champagne. Uh, my, my own data tell me that it's highly likely that New South Wales has peaked out. Health officials admit it's encouraging, but... Uh, we'd like to see a few more days before we can um, have confidence about whether there is a trend. No politicians at the morning news conference today, leaving bureaucrats to answer the questions. Is there a, a health reason why we've been sticking with the LGAs rather than defining it by suburb? This is all open to a continued review, but one of the factors that makes it more practical to use an LGA level is the uh, ability for people to move about, about to do essential activity. So let's have a look at some of the inconsistencies. This is a breakdown of where the outbreaks are. The areas in black have <coughs> a lot of cases, and it's concentrated mainly on those LGAs of concern. But there are some really stark examples of where it seems unfair. Epping, in the city of Parramatta, so an area of concern. But have a look at this. The cases are incredibly low, just 23 since the outbreak began, and just eight active cases right now in a population of more than 33,000. Now, across town in Maroubra, it's a similar size population. It has 219 total cases, with 96 active right now, and it is not subject to the tighter restrictions. Up in Blacktown, well, in another area of concern, have a look at the ponds. Just 14 active cases right now. Over in Redfern, though, they have 100 active cases. Again, a similar size population to the ponds, and they're not facing those tougher rules. Now, no system is perfect, but you can see, of course, why some residents are pretty fed up after months and months of this. We would say to the government, where is this up to? Is it based on health advice? What information are you processing? Front up to the media and explain your decisions. Especially with vaccination rates soaring. The state is likely to hit 80% first dose by tomorrow. Daniel Southern for 10 News First.